All right, everybody. Well, hello and welcome to the new Retro Tech shop you see behind you. That's right. That lovely building is the new headquarters. And I'm about to go in here and get to work on some things. Uh, but I have been able to do a live stream from in here. And let me show you what it looks like. You can see that everything behind me is set up. And that's the new awesome workspace right there. So if you want to check out uh, our live show, I'll be posting links to that. And there's a link to the playlist in the description for this video. But today we're going to look at the Sony FW900. That's right. I went through my footage as I after I moved and I found some lost footage of a complete restoration of the Sony FW900 that I did in my old shop uh, before moving here so we're gonna look at that today we're gonna go through this whole restoration on one of the world's best CRTs the FW900 in this case right behind me I have one of the world's most desirable CRT monitors and I'm talking about the Sony FW900 Wow, so this is in one of these amazing custom flight cases from US Case. And there actually is a phone number to contact them right there if you want to get a case made like this. Now something like this is going to cost, well, almost a thousand dollars these days, I'm sure, due to the quality of it, but it has a very nice durable outside, nice strong corners and beautiful clamps here to keep the case closed. So we're about to open it. Oh yeah. Let's look at the front here. Now this is the more desirable Sony version of this CRT. Oh wow, this is absolutely one of the heaviest monitors I've worked on. Now if we look over here, there is some damage to this bezel. And again, this is most likely because it is so heavy that when you move it, if you're not cautious, you could bang it into stuff. And that's unfortunately what happens with these larger CRTs is just because of the weight and the sheer size of them, they're very difficult to move around and always were back in the day when they were in use in the mid 2000s. And we'll just look again here at the elegant design of this CRT first off. Check out that flat screen, that's 24 inches on the tube. And then if we look down here, we'll see the Sony emblem, as well as our menu navigation, an input switch, a reset, an ASC, and then there's a, no a knob here where we can turn this dial and actually hide those controls out of sight. Here's our power button, and there's a nice USB hub down here. Now if I flip this around, we'll take a look at the back side. This is actually a different color than this plastic. See that? Different shades. So I don't know if anybody has a monitor like this one and can confirm for us if this shading is on all these GDMs like this or if this just happens to be a exterior shell that doesn't match uh, the original. This will go between 100 and 240 volts for power input. 50 or 60 hertz, 2.2 to 1.2 amps. So here's a look at our input board. We have R, G, B, and then the two sinks right here. See, they're labeled right there. And then we have a VGA input right here. That's input one, that's input two. Let's start by plugging in the AC cord. Then we can also plug in this VGA adapter for the console we're going to be testing. For today's testing, I will be using this Sega Dreamcast, outputting VGA signal through the AV output. We're going to be taking a look first off at the 240p test suite. And this is a new version from Artemio and the 240p test suite team and VGNY software. And it's just a wonderful copy, so we're going to use this uh, to see how it looks. First powering on this CRT, I do see the indicator light coming on. I hear things coming alive. should take a minute to turn on. There we go. Monitor is working. There we getting something happening. Look at that. Starts right up. 
All right, some things to note here. Now, if you press this button in while you're sending a signal into it, it will actually pull up a menu. And you can do things like adjust your screen, your centerness, your convergence, your color, option, size, language, geometry. You can navigate through that using this little thing right here. If you press it to the right or left, you'll be able to adjust the brightness and contrast. And wow, that screen is super sharp. The image is amazing down here. Uh, just the colors are bright. Everything looks perfect on this CRT. I can't believe we're actually seeing this right now. It just looks amazing. So our shell is held into place with some Phillips head screws that are located all the way up here in this plastic piece all the way up at the front. Same thing up top. That's a little bit easier to get to these, but you do need a long screwdriver. And this may be the longest Phillips head screwdriver I've ever seen. Just check out that thing. Look how long that is. You can definitely get in here and easily get these screws out with this thing. Well, the shell's ready to come off. And the one thing that was a complete pain about this shell is these little hooks. The bezel has on the underside here that hooks into this slot right there on the shell so it's a little bit difficult to push this in you gotta tap the sh bezel and tap here and push it it's it's really weird there's some notes in the manual on it but here is the crt we have all this lovely shielding to protect ourselves and the crt uh, but what we need to do now is we're going to have to get inside this thing and to do that, we're gonna remove some of these shielding screws. We'll get these shielding plates out of the way and we're gonna start pulling boards to service. And then we're gonna kinda of go from there. I've removed the first shield and there's our anode cap. But the thing I really wanted to show you in here was there is a thick layer of dust inside of here. And it's actually smells like cigarette dust. So there's some cigarette smell in here. And that's why you'd see almost like a tar looking build up beyond just the original like here's the black on the fly bag now check out how much tar is kind of built up in here where that cigarette smoke got in there so we're gonna have to do our best to try to clean all this too as well as service the boards but uh, this is how it looks to start with i've removed the power supply which is this unit right here and it's all shielded, but there's a ton of just dust and smoke. See how it's that, that almost hazy brown orange look. And if we look behind that power supply up against the tube, you can see that smoke. That's, that's what it will look like. This kind of not just gray dust, but also a darker tar look. And that's all over the board. So it was definitely time to check out this CRT. There's, uh, some more boards in there. We're going to get those eventually down there and our input board and all that. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the power supply. Here's the power supply board that has been fully serviced. Just wanted to show it to you. We've got a full recap on this board. It's been cleaned and then solder has been touched up on a lot of points back here also. And then it's of course been cleaned. But here's a look at just some of the pads. There's a lot of like dust built up on this, especially from the cigarettes and cigarette smoke. But most of that's cleaned off and it's about as good as it's gonna get. Now before we go too much further, I'm gonna reinstall this in the CRT upstairs and run a test of the board. So here's a screen test. You can see the monitor is functioning. Sorry about the strobing on the camera. And this is the power supply, so it's reinstalled and testing out good, no problems. We need to move on to another board. We saved the best board for last, and that's our deflection card over here on this side of the monitor. Now this is where our flyback assembly is right here, and as you can tell, the anode cap comes from there up to here. So we need to remove that anode cap and discharge this CRT in order to get this deflection card out. Now this particular monitor is built with a bleeder discharge 
uh, resistor so it should automatically discharge however you do want to take precautions while doing this but I'm going to discharge this a little bit differently as opposed to how I do it uh, on the more dangerous TVs and uh, so you'll see me do it the way it's intended to be done by Sony Tex. Uh, we're still going to discharge the tube and the anode after we remove the cap but we're going to try this a little bit different as a, to avoid scraping the back side of the tube really at all when we remove the anode cap and we'll see even though it does have that resistor there's always a chance that we could still get a zap here so we, we have to do this uh, the right way. We'll see if there's still any kind of discharge here. The first thing I'm going to do is just lift up this anode cap and take a look there at our anode point. You see that in there? Down in there? So I'm just going to try to push this together and pull it out. If I can just squeeze it. There we go. See, so you can just squeeze that and pull it out like that. So it's actually not been discharged yet. Now I can come in with my discharge tool and let's see if we get any reaction here on our anode cap. Nothing. So that's good and discharged. Let's check out the tube. Well, what about the tube? Let's see. No, nothing there. No zap. So the resistor's working. And this is a safe CRT right now. All right, I'm going to get this board out. And we're going to send it down to the lab to get serviced. All right, so I really hope you enjoyed looking closely at the inside of that CRT. And I do have a special treat for you. Um, I have published photographs of this entire uh, restoration that I'm going to be leaving as a slideshow at the end of this video. So I'll add some background music, some soft jazz or something, and then you can roll through a slideshow of over 100 photographs that are high resolution of the whole job of me going through and recapping and reflowing solder and like replacing all the capacitors, all that stuff is in that or on that slideshow that you're going to see at the end of this video. Now, before I do that, I will show you some gameplay footage here. Now, if you really want to see the better gameplay footage of this monitor, you should check out one of the better channels that's uh, excellent at filming a CRT. Heck, I know John Lenneman's done a lot on this FW900, and it probably is one of the best people at filming CRTs there is. So I would recommend checking out uh, the Digital Foundry uh, videos on this CRT. But that's the FW900. I don't know that there's anything else I'd really mention about this one particularly, except that it went and it has a good life. It's gone on and it had a good future. Now, I did not have time to do like the adjustment phase. This was pretty much a deal where I told the client uh, I was pretty much only going to be offering the hardware modification for this one because the things to make other adjustments as far as like deeper adjustments on the CRT, you have to do that through Windows. And it's a pretty... Uh, tedious process and it's, it's left more for somebody on the user end if you want to go pursue that you have to kind of do that because hiring somebody to really go through those settings and spend all the time to do the tedious adjustments can get uh, even more expensive the more important thing is making sure the hardware is in good shape and ready to go so the full recap was done and cleaning and everything and uh, I left the servicing on that Windows um, to other people so if you're looking for a Windows referral guide. I'm sorry, I don't have one of those available just yet. But that's it. That's the FW900. Uh, please, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, definitely check out the slideshow that's coming. And I will see you all next time with some more retro content.